So we're here in the engine room of the William M. Black. It's not quite as warm as it would have been when these men were working, but we're gonna still pretend something. We're gonna pretend that the boat needs to go to a different section of the Missouri River in order to do the dredging. And to do that, we need to use the paddle wheels, and they are on the sides of the boat. This was a side wheeler, not a stern wheeler. So the fastest that the boat could actually go was about 10 miles an hour. And in order to engage the two paddle wheels, we would get a direction from the pilot up in the pilot house, and he would crank the lever that's connected to the telegraph up in the pilot house, and the cable here and the chain linkage would move, and they would, the men in the engine room would get the signal as to which direction he wanted this paddle wheel on this part of the boat to go, a stern, reverse, or a head. And then the men would be able to move these levers, among other valves, to control steam pressure going through specific pipes here in order for the Pittman arm that you see over here to actually operate. So if you've ever seen Polar Express or if you ever grew up uh, watching Petticoat Junction, both of those shows had locomotives. The locomotive wheels had to go the same direction and same speed at the same time. This boat, when she was operating, allowed for one paddle wheel to go one direction and one speed and the other one to go a different direction and different speed if necessary so the boat could turn on the river. Or they could go the same direction and same speed at the same time and reach their destination and it could go forwards or backwards. So here in the engine room there would be so much noise from the equipment, from the machinery operating, that even though the men could get the signal from the pilot house on the telegraph, they could still also use the speaking tubes, and there are several of these for this part of the boat, um, from the engine room to the um, captain's and chief engineer's cabins and up to the pilot house. And actually, if you train yourself in such a way, your voice will carry and you can also hear these. So when I first came on board to do a shift in my early days here, um, and I was very new, I came into the engine room and I could hear voices, but there were no people around me. and. I was looking around and I had no idea and then I realized that somebody was in the pilot house trying to communicate with me through the speaking tube here. 